Some people may be wondering, well, what does the path to becoming an OT look like? And okay. maybe what even kind of, because everyone kind of has their own story into being like, how did I end up being becoming an OT? And if you don't mind, I'd like to hear kind of what led you down the path of becoming one, what made you kind of decide, and then what were the necessary steps that maybe you didn't anticipate or something people could expect? Um, well, my best friend in high school, he's still my best friend. His wife was an OT, and um, <clears throat> so I was teaching school back then, and every Sunday night, I would, I would tell my best friend Randy and his wife, like, man, this I'm really depressed. It's Sunday night. I have to go in to teach tomorrow. You got the real Sunday <laughs> scare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I absolutely didn't. I, I like coaching as a part of teaching, but I really dreaded going in Monday morning. So if that's the, the case for you, it's not the right field for you. Right. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? So, and my um, friend's wife, who is an OT, said, Pete, I think you would make a really good occupational therapist like I am. And I'm like, well, okay, you know, way back I was like, what's OT? And then mm -hmm. she explained it to me. And um, so that's how I, you know, started exploring it, talking to people. Um, so that's how I got into it. Um, and um, yeah, so that was, that was like 32 years ago. <laughs> and every Sunday night, I actually look forward to going to work. Right. And I'm, I still enjoy my work. So mm -hmm. I could never yeah. say that as a teacher, unfortunately. We talk about that all the time, like the willingness to take a few steps back to go forward. Yeah. So it's very, like, what, how old were you when you made that change? I was 28. So yeah. I taught yeah, for four right. years. So still yeah. super young, but yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. at that time, there's a lot of different pressures, especially from your friends or whatever. Right. That, like, you're going to go start a whole new career right now. But yeah. if it turns around and you're significantly more excited to go to work it's definitely worth it right oh yeah but that was the time to go though too because yeah. i was single and yeah. so where did you go to school for ot you said to jefferson, jefferson, jefferson. Yeah, in philly yeah okay yep cool yeah at that time so, was it because they've now it's now you have to go get your doctorate i don't know that, about Boston, so. for for pt it is now entry entry level doctorate okay, okay. for ot ot is um entry level master's degree Okay. But OT, in, in, in the rehab world, OT is considered PT's little sister. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or little brother, whatever you want to look at. Okay. We, all, we always follow what PT does. <laughs> right, right. So ultimately, OT is probably going to be entry-level doctorate. Yeah. You think so, coming down the pipeline? Well, sure. I'm, I'm, there's been a lot of talk and with the higher-ups and everything. About right. Trying to... But right now, it's, it's entry-level master's degree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... So there's still a lot of schooling that goes into it. There's a lot of schooling. I mean, you have to get your, a lot of people get their bachelor's degree in health sciences or, or some other um, similar field. And then, you know, you get in an OT program for another, like, two or two and a half years and get hmm. your master's. Yeah, um, that's what St. Joe's has. It has, like, a three-year undergrad and then, like, a two-year partnership with Jefferson. Right. They, like, will go there and finish that up. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty, yeah. Yeah. It's probably a good time program. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So after that, then you have to uh, um, pass it. Well, there's um, after your schooling, there's six month field work requirement, um, and then after that, you uh, <clears throat> there's a national exam you have to take uh, to pass, and then then you would get your license, mm -hmm. your right. OT license. Yeah. All right. So then you can practice at that point. Do you have like a favorite experience being an OT? Like, do you have a certain client or someone that sticks out in your mind that you're like, I actually like you can see oh. that you made a big difference. Oh yeah, this person's definitely. Life. Well, I'm sure there's yeah. that, but do you yeah. have do you have like one that will stick out in your mind or maybe two that just be like, you think about that person and you actually alterly change their like life. Yes, there was this one patient I had. It's probably a couple years after I I was uh, started my business. Um, she had major rotator cuff surgery, older lady. She was probably in her uh, late 60s. Um, but um, she was an artist. So she came in, um, uh, I guess it was like maybe four weeks after her surgery. You know, could barely move her arm. She was all depressed. She, all she wanted to do was do her artwork. Mm -hmm. She couldn't do her artwork. That was her dominant hand. Um, the best thing I ever did with her, the first day, she's like, I can't do any, any artwork. 
can't do any paintings. And, and I got a clipboard out, put paper on the clipboard, and put it on her lap, because she couldn't do this with her arm at that point, mm -hmm. put her on her lap. I said, why don't you sketch something with the pencil, you know? She, she starts sketching with the pencil, and like two or three minutes into it, this big smile breaks over her face, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she found out she could actually still do something like right. that, you know? And make a long story short, I think I worked with her for like six or eight months because she needed extensive therapy, but... Um, and then she was done with therapy and you know she was really happy because she had functional motion and everything like that she was able to to you know go back to painting i think it was six months after that she came back into the therapy clinic with this beautiful painting that i have hanging up in my office oh, really? right now oh, that's, yeah, that's very cool it was so awesome every <laughs> oh. time i see that it just makes my day yeah know? it just brings a smile to you yeah you yep. really i yeah. mean yeah, that first thing you did though is not even have mm -hmm. anything to do with OT. That's just being a, a kind person, like showing her that yeah. she could still do something that she cared about, and then mm -hmm. coming, giving her that dose of it, and then being like, "If we do these exercises, you can right, you can paint again." But that is OT though, because yeah. you, as an occupational therapist, you want your clients to be able to do what is important to them mm -hmm. no matter what their injury is mm -hmm. this lady the most important thing for her was to get back to painting yeah so the first step to that was get a clipboard keep it on your lap get a pencil and just do sketching that's super <laughs> so is you know there, so, so is there a psychological aspect that you learn oh yeah OT? definitely and that's and, definitely and, something that i missed that's in that's even yeah. more in ot um there is uh higher psychology uh requirements than pt for instance so wow. we do have um two or three major um, psychology socio sociology courses that helps you kind of understand mm -hmm. your clients the groups that your clients are in that type of thing so it's wow. easy to see how that plays yeah. such a large role because I know even yeah. and I've ne been lucky enough I've never experienced a traumatic injury or anything like that but just even when you're sick or you are slightly hurt or something like that it's there's also like there's a the physical side where you don't feel yourself and you mm -hmm. can't perform the way you're used to performing but there's also the mental frustration right. that I'm sure mounts like especially in like an eight month type recovery I'm sure there's a frustration that mounts over time that you just right. want to, I just want to be normal. I just want to be able to do right. what I'm used to doing. I don't want to live with this anymore. And so yeah. I'm sure that is a huge piece, kind of navigating mm -hmm. those feelings to try to, because you, you ultimately, like, it's just about them living their best life. So that's a huge piece in that pie that I think you're probably overlooked because I yeah. didn't think about it until you just said that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, even I'm guilty on this podcast of doing that. I mean, you'll be able to watch that back. I didn't even think about that. But I mean, that's a huge hurdle that if you're not addressing it, Right. could be very detrimental like long term for the person right right yeah that's very very interesting I, I think OTs generally um, the focus of our our schooling is to try to be holistic mm -hmm. like you just don't look at an injury but you look at like you know the person's environment where they're functioning at um, psychologically how they're feeling physically how they're doing um, culturally you've got to look at all that stuff when, you, when you're working with somebody. So it is more of a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. And when you yeah. see that mind shift in your client, I'm sure you can see like the physical repercussions of that also. Like when, mm -hmm. when that mindset shifts and they believe that they can now do the thing that they want to do, right. their exercises probably start to get a little bit better. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's it goes the mind and the body go together, definitely. Yeah. 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 As a CHT, I was wondering, is, is there anything that kind of is the repeat, the go-to injury that you see a lot that people are coming in with? Um, yeah, I would say, I mean, carpal tunnel. Um, That's the one with the thumb, right? The carpal tunnel is like when you have tingling, tingling and numbness in like your thumb, middle finger, and a lot of times this side of the ring finger. Okay. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest one. Um, and that's true about that bad posture. Largely by typing, right? It can be just okay. through, and even if you have good posture and you're typing like 10 to 12 hours a day, for instance, you yeah. know, without taking any breaks or anything, yeah, that sure. can set you up for, for carpal tunnel and tendonitis. Um, but, you know, there's such a wide variety of, mm -hmm. of the 
injuries I see as a CHT, like I might see tendon lacerations, somebody cuts the tendon, the doctor has to do surgery on it, then there's certain protocols you have to know as a certified hand therapist how to assist somebody to get their hand function back over time. So you yeah. have to understand like the healing process um, of, you know, scar production. Um, you have to understand all of that when you're kind of developing your, your treatment plan. So, uh, but yeah, anything, as a CHT, you have to be able to treat anything from the upper traps to the shoulder to the elbow, the hand, the arm. It can be any type of injury. It can be fracture, can be, um, you know, anything, mm -hmm. anything that people, you know, sometimes the, there's general diagnoses like just pain of the arm, like mm -hmm. you'll get from uh, the primary care doctor because they, you know, they're not sure exactly what's going on. They don't want to send the person to the orthopedic, so mm -hmm. they send the person to therapy, to OT or PT. Um, so, yeah, it, as a CHT, you have to treat any any um, any problem in the upper extremity. You also have to be able to make splints, custom-made splints, because mm. a lot of times after um, surgery, uh, you'll have to uh, uh, fashion a, a brace for somebody as mm -hmm. a part of the healing process to... Um, you know, help them move through those stages uh, better. So you have to be able to make any type of uh, brace or splint for the fingers or hand or arm. Humeral fracture braces, sometimes a fracture brace for the um, arm. Um, so, so you know, as a CHT, you have to be able to uh, do all of that type of thing. So.